Hello and good evening, and tonight a special edition of Points of View to celebrate the programme's 30th anniversary. It took to the air for the first time ever on the 2nd of October 1961, a week which also saw the start of a new religious programme, Songs of Praise. This was a time when a 19-inch black and white TV set cost 66 guineas, a postage stamp was three pence in old money, and a TV licence a whole four pounds. The licence fee being a subject which has continued to fill post bags. £32 for a TV licence? It's a disgrace. It's far too low. <laughs> the excellent service the BBC provides, it should be at least £400. Uh, Mr Pittman of Camberwell adds... <laughs> the test card is quite magnificent. It justifies the licence fee on its own. Personally, I think the fee is far too low. I would willingly sell my house and all its contents to help the BBC. Anyway, back to the 2nd of October 1961. What else could you have seen and maybe written about that week? Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. Well, TV Dancing Club with Victor Sylvester alternated week by week with Come Dancing. And this being the days before anyone had heard of flat pack furniture. Well, this is what I want to make this week. It's a writing desk. You too could have a home like Barry Bucknell, should you want to. Two policemen were hard at work. May Gray. There's been a murder, madame. He's been shot. And his less sexy mate in uniform across the channel. Oh, good evening, all. Sitcom came in the form of the slick, fast-moving rag trade. And Brenda, you're late. Oh, I'm sorry, Meg. It was the baby. I was up to make getting into Mum's. I made him a lovely breakfast and he wouldn't touch it. He's just gone on to solid. Oh, <laughs> that explains it. You can't breakfast on solid. You want to give him a cup of black coffee and a fag. <laughs> ah, yes. Those were the good old days. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harry Bailey, the entire company, but this time, chiefly, yourself! Leonard Sachs down at the old bull and bush. But back on points of view in October 1961, Robinson Mark I was in the chair. Honestly, no relation. But listen carefully to Robert's delivery. This was a time of much more formal television, no youth programmes, when even if they weren't wearing one, presenters still talked in a sort of dinner jacket voice. Good evening. Johnny Mathis spoke his mind on jukebox jury, a rare event in that particular latitude, and the mail was large. And keeping it in the family, we then had Robinson Mark II with a certain change of pace, and again, honestly, no relation. I noticed a television gardener talking about slug pellets the other day. Surely it's very difficult to hit a slug on the move. We explained that you simply put a slug pellet on the back of the hand and aim straight between the slug's eyes. <coughs> it uh, still doesn't seem quite fair. Kenneth was followed by a bloke called Barry, who got the job despite having completely the wrong surname. Dear Barry, please, please, please ask the Beeb to change that ghastly yellow background when you read points of view. It makes you look as if you have yellow jaundice. Well, as you can see, it has been changed. Reminds me of that old TV commercial, remember? You wonder where the yellow went. For those under 32, which includes the producer of this programme, the yellow went when you brushed your teeth with Pepsodent. But never mind, seven years later, the BBC saw the error of its ways and returned the programme back to the Robinson clan. Anyway, Tom Burt of Wivenhoe, that delightful village in Essex, is sick and tired of having to read boring credits of people he doesn't know. I'm Anne Robinson, by the way, Mr Burt. Yes, I know my hair was ghastly. Anyway, throughout the 30 years, various stars have made guest appearances on Points of View, including, would you believe, Alan Bennett. Sadly, his efforts not kept for posterity. Oh, and there was another Robinson. No relation to me, or Robert, or Kenneth. Hello, I'm Tony Robinson. This is a tennis racket, and this is what you think of the Wimbledon commentators. And Wimbledon's still a popular subject, as is la background music. Other hardy annuals include the cancellation of small children's programmes for sport and, indeed, the cancellation of large grown-ups' programmes for sport. So how much influence does Points of View have? Well, it's hard to actually quantify, but fun letters aside, what we hope we've done now and again in recent times is to persuade the BBC to think or rethink some of its decisions. Another interesting occurrence on this programme, which probably hasn't changed over the years, is the element of humbug. I was given the dubious honour of looking after nine locusts for a school during the Christmas holidays. Did I say nine? It's now more like 200. So if your viewer came here, she'd be more than sick of seeing them always at it. Maybe you could invite Mr A.V. Rawson of Wrexham to have a look. I would like to know how I managed to miss all this sex and depravity so many of your viewers seem to write in about. I sit up every night, bleary-eyed in eager anticipation of something even mildly titillating, but alas, to no avail. My hair's still ghastly. Anyway, back to points of view. Everybody you know talks about it. 
Thank you, Mrs. Torbert, on behalf of all the poor people. You're not trying that cash con again. Is that why you faked your own shooting? So you could trick poor old ladies out of their life savings? Sarah! I didn't fake my own shooting. It was on television. It's already a much-requested item on points of view. A points of view is not without a sense of humour. Well, when you've been sent up as often as this programme. like it. Hello, I'm Anne Robinson, and welcome to another edition of Pointless Views. There's Jasper as me, and here's me and orders from Comic Relief. Don't you think you might make a little more effort over the clothes? After all, the Queen might be watching. A very valid point, Mrs. T. And on to the next, incredibly interesting and intelligent letter. And Mia's spitting image sees me. But it's not been all sex this week, as Mr. Thompson from Halifax writes. Classic railway journeys of the world was a total delight. However, am I the only one to notice the glaring continuity error? And Spitting Image doesn't think much of you, either. Hello. Well, we've had quite a few letters after my last appearance. And Mr. Kinnock writes... Dear Mr. Speaker, why, or why, or why, or why, or why, or why... Whereas, why, why. Mrs. Made-up Letter says, why can't we see more of that marvellous Mr. Speaker? And here's a researcher called Lisa, as in Maxwell, back in the points of view office. Why, 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 oh, why, oh, why, 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 oh, why, why... Can't we see more of Robert Kilroy Silk? I mean... <laughs> Incidentally, and I'll say this only as many times as it takes you to appreciate the point, I have never, but never, but never, but never used a letter beginning Y-O-Y. Mind you, others haven't been so fussy. And now, finally, a short note from Audrey Pilkington of Banbury. Why, oh, why do the sort of people who write to points of view always begin with Y-O-Y? Oh, why? Boy, oh boy, it's annoying. And how does one get into print on the small screen? Robert Robinson, back in 1963, explained thus. In recent weeks, Points of View has received an average of 1,350 letters per week. In two five-minute programmes, approximately 20 letters are read, which gives each letter a 1 in 67 chance of being read. The Mail on Sunday last year suggested several ways of getting a letter used. Write the word very 25 times. Add a PS commenting on Anne Robinson's hairstyle. Refer to the BBC management as them upstairs. Use green ink. <laughs> Beg to see an excerpt from a natural history programme. Etc, etc. In fact, the letters which catch my eye are witty, unusual, contain an interesting argument and are informative. Environmental health officers, nurses and mothers being particularly good correspondents. In short, just expressing disgust and outrage or having an opening sentence like this... I have never before felt moved to write to the BBC. Well, frankly, those are ten a penny. Anyway, enough from me. We're back with a fresh sack full of letters on October the 16th. I'll leave you with a little bit of some of the others who've had a go at this job over the years. You will note none of them have had to have their legs on show. Good night. <laughs>